Hey, hey, everybody! My name is Why Not, and welcome back to another Speed Art from the Vault. We are still looking over my old Halloween D&D campaign from 2021. Uh, as always, I am joined here by my good friend Mouse, a main player in the entire game. Howdy. And we're actually going back to what we uh, were on last time, which is we're still in the backyard of the main house we were playing in. This is Vinny, a really old monster, a uh, very simple monster, of course, a man-eating plant, that lived in Doc Sardonic's backyard in a shed. I, you can tell I did a lot of work, uh, prep work before I started. Like, as always, I have a bunch of, like, bones set up, but there's a lot of geometry going on in just the petal alone, you know? Just in the mouth. Yeah. Because Vinny had to look very specific, and it had to have a three-dimensional look. She's, uh, she's one of my oldest monster ideas I have, mainly because it wasn't an actual idea I had. The, the man-eating plant is a very old one, you know? I, I think out of all of the monsters that I remember you creating, I think Vinny is the oldest one that we have here on your thing today. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm almost, I'm almost positive that Vinny came before Popster. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't think uh, I don't think Pupster came until you were in high school, and you had Vinny stuff when we were in like the seventh grade. Oh yeah, I actually remember the first time I drew her. I was in history class. Uh, I don't remember what we were learning for obvious reasons. <laughs> I really had fun with Vinny's design because I never actually drew her more than actual little doodles and stuff. You know, very yeah. simplistic drawings. Uh, this time around, I got to actually study what a bunch of monstrous man-eating plants look like, as you can see from the reference photos I have pulled up. Obviously, I stuck more with the, uh, typical man-eating plant from Little Shop of Horrors, as you can see to the bottom right. But I really preferred the shape of the head on the top right. I don't know, I think it just works. A big, bulbous head with giant lips, you know? Reminds me of the, uh, the man-eating plant from that Veggie Tail. The Larry Boy one. Oh my goodness, it does look like the, uh, the rumor weed. <laughs> it looks exactly like the rumor weed. All it's missing is the little, uh, plant hands and the, uh, and the sunglasses. <laughs> I think that thing also had hair? I don't remember. Man, I, watched, I watched that movie once when I was, like, a kid. I, I, I'm a little embarrassed to say I've seen it, uh, multiple times, and the last time I did was maybe two years ago. I mean, nothing nothing to be ashamed of watching Veggie Tales. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm a, I'm a child at heart. <laughs> I have a childish sense of wonder for animation, and especially for nostalgia. I really had to make this uh, pose look dynamic. Because otherwise it was just going to be a plant, you know? Yeah. And you see, I you can tell uh, just by the shovel in the background, I had... I had plans to uh, make this a bit more of an elaborate space that looked like the inside of a shed. That didn't end up happening, though, as you'll see by the end. I think it, I think you're better off that way. You give yourself too much trouble for not having things be, uh, like, more complicated. I think simple really works for arts like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm my own worst critic. I always want to do way too much. That said, this was actually drawn, like, immediately after Don Ponzo. It doesn't surprise me. I had just taken a five minute break. It was just past 2 a.m. in the art lab back at our old college. And uh, and I was just like, okay, they're probably going to run into Vinny next. I have to finish this. I'm so tired. I just want to go home. <laughs> Vinny was one I just wanted to finish, you know? Which is fair. And it didn't really, your drawing didn't suffer for it any. Oh, no. I, I think it worked, especially with uh, all the plants and uh, all the plant elements and roots going into the ground. Yeah, and also Vinny was another one of those that didn't last very long in combat. Oh no, you found her immediately after killing Pupster. And then uh, we murdered her too. Yeah, there was the shed uh, right next to his doghouse where, uh, where, where Vinny was living. That was actually the one that I believe was moved due to behavioral problems. As you saw back in, I believe, episode one or two. I'll link it up in the card uh, above if I remember. Uh, but a bunch of those... She was originally in the uh, pet zone. For obvious reasons. Yeah, but I mean, so was everybody else. Yeah. Technically. But she was the one who was moved for behavioral problems. And for good reason, I feel like, at the end. Because if memory serves, halfway through this battle, she ate Rothgar. 
know his character. He had it coming. <laughs> he did. He really wanted to kill something, though, and he was ecstatic that he got to. Oh, especially considering he wasted one of his abilities trying to fight Pupster and never got to do anything with it. Yeah, that was kind of a shame. It was. Uh, poor, poor Noah. <laughs> he was excited. I, I'm. I will say though, um, with how quick Vinny died, I think the most that uh, she contributed with her life was the uh, the wine glasses that we found in the shed. Oh yeah, yeah. I wanted to give you something extra, like a reason to go in there. That was just a bonus item that you could have used for any number of things. I didn't expect you to use one of them uh, to beat the mirror maze, though. That was just sort of the very last bottles of Doc's uh, home-brewed wine. Sardonic. And, and, I mean, I think I got good use out of it, so I'm not exactly upset that we went into the shed, but I don't think we got anything else in here. Not really. You just killed another carnival freak. This was this is one of the ones you didn't have to fight. Yeah, we came in here specifically to murder your beloved plant child. Yeah. Well, actually, you didn't even come in there for that. You had no idea that she was in there. I had an idea. Did you? Yeah. Because I, I, I remember you were the first one to get hit. You didn't want to have to find the key to the shed. I don't remember where I hit it at this point. It's probably somewhere in my notes. But I gave you a giant magical lock, and you picked it. Yeah. And so immediately, when it was open, you opened the door and immediately got thrown back against the house. Because one of her uh, tendrils uh, slammed out against you. I was I wasn't expecting an immediate attack. I was expecting like a wiggly reveal. Yeah. Now I remember when you first found this thing, uh, you didn't really see it. You found documentation over it, and it was called Project Venus, as in Venus flytrap. My goodness, you really made me do my homework for that one. <laughs> Did I? Yeah, because I actually had to be prepared with actual D&D monsters that he would have studied to make this thing. I, I never even mentioned, her carnival freak was the contortionist. You've mentioned it to me before, at least. I mentioned it to you in-game. I forgot to mention it in the video, though. <laughs> I I'm sure that was a little confusing for anyone who's trying to keep up with this. The, the five of you that are out there. Actually, I've noticed at least 30 people are watching these. That's nice. I mean, that is pretty nice. Now, I'm not sure if this is visible to everyone, because I know everyone sees color differently. Uh, you specifically, Mouse. <laughs> I was wondering if you were trying to bring that up in one of these videos. <laughs> oh, you're colorblind. <laughs> but as you can probably tell, most of you, uh, she's actually got uh, little plant-like details uh, around her, little wavy lines. Uh, I actually just was looking at a lot of different photos of plants, and I think I might have also gotten this from... Uh, from one of my references I had pulled up, but uh, they're sort of like veins in the in the leaves, I think. They're little openings for the flower, basically. Yeah. I wanted to add that little extra bit of detail, which I think made it pop. If there was one thing I could change about Vinny, though, I would have added more shadow. I think more shadow definitely would have done this, this art piece some good stuff. She looks just a little flat to me, you know? She also kind of looks like a watermelon. Oh my god, she does look like a watermelon. <laughs> Vinny, the man-eating watermelon. I like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's Vinny, the man-eating contortionist. Uh, Maus, you got anything you want to end off on? Um, we murdered your plant watermelon, baby. <laughs> my plant watermelon, baby. No. You know what, you did. We did. Uh, but yeah, that's the video. Before we close out, I just want to say, uh, remind everyone to like, comment, and subscribe. Every time you do, it tells the uh, algorithm that I'm doing pretty good and it shares it to more people. It's just kind of a big help to me in general. But as always, he's been Mouse, I've been Why Not, and I hope you're entertained. Good night, everybody.